Speak up, son. I'm sorry, Mr. President. I can't do it. 50,000 tons of my steel, American steel, in this crackpot's hands. He might be gone tomorrow. That's exactly my point. That's why I feel that I have to cancel all of Burnham Steel's contracts with Germany. Of course, Nick, naturally. However, I could use a reliable man, one above suspicion who might, uh, let us say, keep a keen eye on Nazi industrial ambitions. I'd like that man to nose a tiny bit around Poland, too. Steel is an artery to power, son. You mean spy? I mean, don't cancel your contracts just yet. Go on over to Europe, conduct business as usual, and then favor me with your thoughts on the situation. You know, Nick, I think he and I are going to know each other rather better than either one of us desires. You call me around in a moment, Mr. Burnham. Thank you, Henry. Excuse me. Welcome to the White House. Thank you. You look beautiful, Madame Duvier. Washington will miss you. Ah, uh, and me, Henri? I am not beautiful enough to be missed. Huh? Uh, good evening, Mr. Ambassador. I just, uh, man... Oh, no, no, it's too late. Come on, don't tease. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Henri. You may excuse. We'll miss you, too. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Ambassador. The Secretary of State tells me that nothing can be done for the St. Louis and her passengers. But, Mr. President, there are only 937 people. And if Cuba doesn't take them, and we don't take them, they're going to be shipped back to Germany like damaged goods. My dear, I know the Nazis have been rough on the Jews. It's one reason our quota for German immigrants is full. My own hands are tied. Anyway, Leanne, it's not an American problem. I would think it was everyone's problem, sir. Have I found an ally, Franklin?
As you all know, our dear friend Armand has been recalled to his native France. This is a great loss to Washington and to me and my family. So, I ask out of pure selfishness, please return soon, Ambassador, and the exquisite Madame de Villiers. Have a good Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, sir, I didn't hear you come in. How was Washington? The usual. Johnny asleep? Like a little lamb. We listened to Fibber McGee and Molly, and he was off. Huh. Would you like a late supper? I don't believe so. I had a bite on the train, thank you. Where's uh, Mrs. Burnham? She's out with friends. <laughs> You'll miss being a new when you go away. I feel so lonely just for you only. For you know, honey, you had your way. And when you leave me, I after my own heart. I didn't know fabulous Broadway playwrights possessed hearts. Only those of beautiful women. Hillary, I gotta get some cigarettes. And Margaret Sullivan for my next million. One quick call. You're getting more like my husband every day, Russell. Well, hello there. Go peddle your typewriter, Russ. I'll keep the lovely lost lady entertained. Just don't get lost with her. Hillary Burnham, meet Philip Markham. Back in a flash, love. Haven't we met before? Really, Mr. Markham, that one's older than your family name. See, you do know me. It was at Lady Ashbury's gala. You wore a silver and teal scaparelli that sort of plunged in all the proper places. And my name is Philip. You have a rather dangerous reputation, Philip. I know. I'm going to the south of France for the summer to play polo, Monte Carlo, Nice. I like the rocky beaches. Something about lying out in all those pebbles that brings out the masochist in me. I'm going abroad too. Tomorrow, to Paris. Some of my French friends tell me all hell could break loose over there. Doesn't the threat of war scare you? Nothing scares me. Taking some of uh, my clothes too. Yes, dear. I embarrassed you again tonight, didn't I? No, no. Yes. Embarrassed me? Are you crazy? Your father raised you to be the wife of a diplomat, and by God, he succeeded. <laughs> then why am I not diplomatic? <laughs> uh, Besides. Franklin, adore women. <coughs> With a quick mind. Ah. <laughs> you know what they told me? Hmm. 
He told me he thinks I am one hell of a lucky guy. <laughs> he didn't. I don't know what he meant by that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come for that bad, huh? Hillary, you are like a hurricane. I mean, look at all this stuff. You don't have to be so hard on us. You don't have to take your own china or your own sheets. Don't be a fool. God only knows who slept in those beds. Well, how was the capital? Say hi for little hell to all those folk at the big old White House. Well, I'd hoped that you would be here when I got back, but I guess I'm a fool after all. Well, I got bored, so I went out with Russ. I had fun for a damn change. I'm sorry to take you away from all your buddies. <laughs> don't worry. I'll find new ones. Wait till you meet this girl. She is beautiful. Dances like a ballerina, a face like Helen of Troy, and does she love a party? The sweets are this way. John Steen. John? Hi, darling. How's my favorite niece? I'm your only niece. That's right. I knew there was a reason. <laughs> what a lovely surprise. <laughs> well, you don't think I'd let my only brother's only child sail off without my blessing? You look lovely, darling. I wish you could have lived to see you grown up. He'd have been so proud. Mind you, he'd have been mad as hell if you not sailing on one of his freighters instead of roughing it on this bucket. Hey, Charles, bonjour. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you. How brave of you to come, eh? Thank you. <laughs> now, you take care of her, huh? I'm not too thrilled how this horrible little man is behaving over there. Oh, none of us are, mon ami, none of us are, mm. huh? Anyway, you have a good trip. I love you. Nick! Hi, oh, Ralph's good to see you. <laughs> How's it How are you? Yeah. Thank you. How's life with father doing? Hey, a minimum five-year run, even if there is a war. I expect to see your name and lights come in. Thanks for coming. Good luck. Hey, good luck to you. Good luck. Is he gonna need it? Here you are, darling. Mm. Good looking fellow, your husband. Yes. And rich and charming and sophisticated. Lord, I was mad about him. I don't understand. Why can't you come directly to Paris? Because I promised the Duchess two weeks in Newport. It's a pet name for my mother. Oh. She's more than the hand that feeds me, so I treat her like work. Your husband's very fortunate. Why is that? Everybody knows his daddy left him a bundle with a steel, with no royal strings attached. Nick made 15 fortunes from that bundle of steel. In fact, Philip, my love, Nick is steel. You write me directly you arrive, huh? I will. And you behave yourself while I'm going. Me? Saint. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> now you take care, huh? Oh! Excuse me. I'm crowded in here. Hello. I saw you at the White House last night. Right. Oh, Leanne B.A. Nick Burnham. You used to be Leanne Hackett. My father did business with your father. Hey, Dad, the ship's just about to sail. Mom wants you to make a toast. I'll be right there. Well, we're sailing together, so... Uh, I'm sure we'll run into each other. If there's anything I can do, let me know. Well, I don't like stormy weather, so if you can arrange a smooth crossing... I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Carson, I told you to stay with me. Now, come on! <laughs>
Mr. Burton. Pleasure. Won't you come and join us? May I introduce the Vernon, His Excellency and Madame de Villiers? Good evening. Please be seated. I have all of our favorites. Oh. And what are your favorites, Ambassador? Do you share? My wife and I both uh, prefer the soul, Madame. And you? Champagne. I need some. Nick, be a dear. France for good, Ambassador. Well, as long as this uh, tension exists, Monsieur Burnham. Please call me Nick. Nick. See? Are you there on business? The contracts all over the continent. I have to fulfill them in a hurry. Ah, so you believe there will be war? I hope I'm wrong. I guess I do. Forgive me for being. So planned. But are you still dealing with the German? Yes. I know I sound Machiavellian, but that's how a business is run. I have to honor those contracts. I also have contracts to preserve the honor of France, to start with. To France, huh? So lovely. And tonight it's so nice to have no telephones, no meetings, no paperwork. And I have you all to myself. You spoil me. Is it? Not in the mood. You know, I'd hope that this trip might make a difference. No, it didn't. It's just not. Just a minute. Oh. Good morning, Madame de Villiers. Please come in. I didn't know you were on board, Jacques. Is the ambassador... Ah, bonjour, Jacques. Uh, do you mind uh, meeting me in the salon in about uh, 15 minutes? We excellent. Damn it. Why didn't you tell me your shadow was on board? Oh, Jacques and I have tons of paperwork to do before we reach Paris. He's my right arm, darling. 
The sooner I meet with him, the sooner we will be free. I'd like to throw him overboard. But knowing Jacques, he'd just swim back to Le Havre with your briefcase between his teeth. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, huh? Yes, dear. And, uh, you make lots of new friends, huh? Yes, dear. And, and uh, I love you. Yes, dear. Ah. And I'll enjoy your breakfast. Yes, dear. for you. I'm gonna go up to the pool. Come on. Oh, precious, I'd love to. Really, I would, but uh, your mother has a splitting headache. Why don't you run along with your daddy? Well, we'll see you at lunch, huh? Of course. I just want to lie down for a while in this lovely fresh air. You'll set a place at the table for me, okay? Okay. Bye, Mom. Have fun. That was good. I want you to do it again. You kids look out for each other for a minute. I'm going to get some exercise, OK? Oh! <laughs> I thought I was being attacked by a shark. Some of my business competitors might agree with you. <laughs> There's the ambassador. Oh, he has to work. And I get to play. I see. But you'd really rather not without him. Right. Now I'm just looking after my son today. He's a sweet little boy. Yes, he is. You're going over to sell steel? That about sums it up. Do you sell to everyone? Wherever I can turn a profit. To Hitler? No, I've never met the man, but yes, to Germany. I'm a businessman. Countries are being overthrown. People displaced and put in labor camps, tortured, murdered because of Hitler. You have no qualms about helping him do that? I don't understand you, Mr. Burnham, and I don't think I want to. I'm not a gun runner, Mrs. Devoyer. And you're not exactly traveling steerage on this trip, are you? We're both wealthy people, and wealth brings responsibility. Now, your father's ships and my steel are going to play a big part in the next few years. You've got a couple of tough choices to make yourself. Ladies dress quite fast. <laughs> I'm all together now. A puff and uh, off you go. What happened to you today? Johnny was very disappointed you missed our lunch. I'm sure you more than made it up to him. Sorry, I missed your shower. We used to shower a lot together. We used to do a lot of things together. Where are you going? Out. I'll look in on Johnny, so don't be a sourpuss. 
Be good. Try to miss me a little at dinner. Paris would be the grand finale of the tour. <laughs> He's playing the Paganini Violin Concerto. Oh, bravo! Oh, Isaac so wanted to open in Vienna, his hometown. But Vienna is now occupied by the Nazis. They won't let him play. Can you imagine I cannot play Vienna because I am Jewish? The next thing we'll hear, they'll be kicking out psychiatrists. <laughs> oh, I wanted so to see my home. Oh, well. Or at least you'll hear my concert in Paris. You won't stop me. Monsieur Ambassador, I'm glad I found you. These cables just arrived. Uh, I think they demand your immediate attention. Wait, no. Well, forgive me. I must go. Oh, may we keep your wife a little longer? Oh, please. That would be so kind. I'm afraid I have not been much fun for Leanne. Well, you don't mind. Oh. I won't be thanks. I'll play a special encore for you in Paris. Schumann's Liebes Drum. <laughs> oh, there is my tobacconist. I must get Armand my special blend. Oh, he'd like that. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. De Viejo. Hello. Good evening. One meets the most fascinating people on the ship. I like Franco. <laughs> Franco, Franco, you like all the women? But of course. Besides, in Italy, Age is an added beauty. Mm. <laughs> You're glorious. I find you bellissima. 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 Excuse me, please, but something wrong has happened to your friend. The lady Hillary. She's in my cabin. She's very ill. Take me to her. Excuse me. It's only a love bite. What was in this? O opium. Get rid of it. Hillary? Hillary? Get her into the shower.
Champagne with an opium chaser? I suppose I should be embarrassed. I feel too bloody awful. It happens. Not to you, I bet. Well, maybe someday I can return the favor. Would you look in on Johnny for me? Of course. Keep drinking that coffee. Mom's gonna be A OK, Jeff. She's drunk, isn't she? No, she. You don't have to lie to me. I know she is. Hey, let me see this. Did you make this? Well, that's great. I love planes. You do? Mm hmm. You know what else I love? What? Peanut butter. Do you like peanut butter? Oh, well, you probably know the peanut butter story. No. You don't know the peanut butter story? Well, I gotta tell you the peanut butter story. There are three ways to get peanut butter off the roof of your mouth. You can try to blow it out, but it won't come out. You can try to swallow it, but it won't go down. Or you can take it out with your finger. There are three ways to get peanut butter off the end of your finger. You can try to blow it off. It won't come off. Or you can try to shake it off. But it won't come off. Or you can lick it off of your finger. There are three ways to get peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you. Listen. You try to get some sleep, will you? Okay. There are three ways to get peanut butter off the roof of your mouth. What happened? Oh, it was nothing serious. Mrs. Burnham had a little too much to drink, and between that and the ocean, she felt a little nauseous, and I was just playing Florence Nightingale. Well, thank you for helping out. Listen, I'm sorry about this afternoon. Well, we both got a little hot-headed. I'm sorry, too. Johnny was a little bit upset, so... I'll check in on him. Night. What happened to that smooth crossing you promised me? Night. Last night? Not especially. I had a little too much fun. Remember that? With Mrs. Debbie huh. Checking up on me, Nikki? Don't you think I should? After all, you are my wife. <sighs> what does that mean, my wife? It sounds like my, my flowers, my bar, my chairs, my table. So what? When I go out with you, who am I? I'm Mrs. Nicholas Burnham. I don't even have my own name. It's like being someone's dog. I just want to be me, Hillary. Just Hillary? Yeah, just Hillary. Mm. Great. Is that who you are to all your friends? At least they don't give a damn who the hell you are. Sick to death of hearing about Nick Burnham. Nick Burnham this, Nick Burnham that. Oh, you must be Mrs. Nicholas Burnham. Mrs. Nick Burnham, Nick Burnham, Nick Burnham. What the hell is this, Hillary, huh? What is it? 
How dare you come back to me like this, you little whore? What do you do, jump in and out of every bed you find? I told you before, that I'll do whatever I want. Don't owe me, you bastard. All you care about are your steel mills, your contracts, your filthy empire that you can leave to your little boy, Johnny. You know what? I don't give a damn. Not about your empire. Not about you. Nikki. Will you give up, Johnny? Lord, we're back to that old tune again. Of course I won't give up, Johnny. Forget it. Hillary, you have never cared about him, and you never will. That's not true. It's just because of him I had to marry you. But I'll never give him up. Mr. Burnham? Hello. Hello. Just out here enjoying the quiet. <laughs> Most people would find this wind unpleasant. I like it. Besides, I felt that if I smiled one more time tonight, my face would crack. Forgive me, but I overheard you and Mrs. Burnham quarreling this afternoon. Yes, the state of my marriage is no secret. If you could have seen Hillary when we first met, she was so beautiful, so full of fun, laughing all the time, dancing till dawn. I was just captivated by her. Now there's nothing left. You have your son. Thank God for that. Do you have Armand? Yes. When I met him and his first wife, he was the French consulate in San Francisco. I was 16 years old. And I fell madly in love with both of them. They were so kind and intelligent. They were the perfect couple. My mother had died when I was born. My father was busy all the time. They sort of took me under their wing. We went everywhere together. And then, she died. Alma was devastated. I was too. And I guess, we sort of hung on to each other for support. And then slowly, Gradually, we realized that we were in love. Two years later, we got married. So life also holds a lot of wonderful surprises. You've helped me a lot tonight. Thank you. I guess I was just tired of it all. Talking with you just makes life seem not quite so bad. It'll get better. 
I should go in now. Friends? Friends. Mr. Metzger, mind if I join you? If you like. I detect from your name that you're Alsatian. Only on my father's side. My mother was French. Uh, and that's what persuaded you to join the French diplomatic corps? I suppose I was really attracted by the history of France. Ooh, the Napoleonic regime, no doubt. Ooh. Good morning, madame. Actually, I find Napoleon's genius to be greatly exaggerated. Like Hitler's? Hmm? I suppose the French think of him as a second Napoleon, only this time on the wrong side of the secret line. Who knows? Maybe they're right. And what's your own opinion on that, uh, may I ask? Hey, Jacques. Oh. Hello, Armand. Bonjour. <laughs> Mr. Zimmerman. Herbert. You know, your aide and I have just been debating the similarities and the differences between Napoleon and Hitler. Ah, oui, Bonaparte and Hitler. Well, I, uh, I am sure the only similarity they might share will be an impressive uh, tomb. Or an early exile. I hope you are finished with those uh, communiques, Jacques, the ones that came this morning. Not quite, sir. Excuse me. Uh, magnificent day, isn't it? to stay with me in Paris. <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm looking forward to setting up our house. Which you do superbly, my darling. with your lovely one. Avec plaisir, Nick. I just wanted to dance with my new friend. It's nice to have a new friend. I don't think we'll be seeing much of each other once we reach land. I'm disappointed. Mom will be busy. Although he pretends he won't be. And I'll be looking after him. Well, if there's anything I can do, as I said before, except control acts of God. Right? <laughs> Thank you. He's going to move on to land.
prices have gone up considerably, while we still wait on your shipment. The demand has accelerated along with the prices. So, business is booming these days. I guess you could say the future of steel looks very good. To what do you attribute this, Mr. Burnham? Nerves. People figure it's safer to live in steel houses. Is that why you stopped in Poland before returning to Paris? I didn't realize we used the same travel agent. People who live in glass houses, like you, are easier to observe. Now look, can we get down to business? Of course. I would be willing to pay a premium for faster delivery of your steel. But I don't care to do business with people who work both sides of the street. Well, it's called capitalism, Bauer. You ought to try it yourself sometime. Now, if there's nothing else, I have a train to catch to Paris. Think it over, Mr. Burnham. You will be paid handsomely for more expeditious service, but think quickly. It's like the man says, the line forms to the right. Good day. Good, Gertz. Oh, Bala. You can't order Americans to agree with you. They respond very poorly to authority. Perhaps someday we will have the opportunity to teach them differently. <laughs> One continent at the time, please. <laughs> oh, and, uh, Heil Hitler. Welcome home, Robert. Robert? Yes. Hi. Hi. Oh, we've missed you so much. We certainly have. Here, let me take your things you. for you upstairs. I am so glad you are home. So am I, Helene. Thanks. <laughs> you look stunning. Thank you. You look very well rested. Where have you been? Did you get my card from Mykonos? Yes, two months ago. What were you studying there? Not the ruins. Beaches, mostly. Let's see, in Spain, I studied the ladies. In Morocco, I... Oh, what about France? The Sorbonne? You know, your father was very upset that you weren't in school when we got here. I kind of figured he would be. I don't know, I just felt kind of stifled, you know? Stifled? <laughs> I believe you had a similar complaint in the last three schools you were in. You asked to come to Paris. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Paris in the winter is beautiful, but when the weather starts to turn... Your fancy turn to ladies on the beach. <laughs> oh, what do you expect to do with your life? Work only when it is cold? Is it a fool, quoi? You had plans for the corps diplomatique. Father, you were the one with the plans. I don't want to spend the rest of my life with a bunch of stuffy foreign office types talking about nothing and doing even less. Uh, is that what you think I do? I don't know. Why don't you tell me what you do?
May I help you, monsieur? Well, I'm looking for a gift, but I'd like it to be special. You take your time, monsieur. Nick? Yeah. I don't believe it. I thought you'd be back in the States by now. What's it been, two months? Business is booming. Not with the Germans, mind you, with the English and the Poles. How have you been? Fine. And you? Look, I uh, need some help. Looking for a gift. What do you think about that? Oh, it's beautiful. Hillary will love it. I'm sure she will. Well, I'm not getting it for Hillary. Excuse me. Would you wrap this up for me, please? With a card, too, monsieur? Oh, no, thanks. I'll deliver the sentiment in person. So, how's Armand? Busy. Too busy. I rarely see him. And when I do, we're usually at some diplomatic function surrounded by a lot of other people. Even this weekend, we're going to a ball at the Chateau of the Marquis de Montereau. I know, Jean-Claude. Yeah, we ride horses together every time I'm in France. Really? Yeah. Well, he's a very nice man. It's just that I'd much prefer to spend a little time alone with Armand. However, the Italian ambassador will be there. French and Italian relations are so strained right now. Armand even feels that when Hitler makes a serious move, Mussolini will go along with the rest of the fascists. I agree with him. Oh, thank you. Keep the change. Hmm? Merci beaucoup, monsieur. For me. Oh, Nick, really, I couldn't. Please, take it. I hope to see you wear it someday. Goodbye, Leah. Goodbye, Nick. Hitler, Hitler, that's all we hear these days. Hey, Bernard is here, don't you flirt with him, okay? For what? To save France. It'd be a joke if it wasn't so damn stupid. I don't think Hitler will stop with Czechoslovakia. He won't be satisfied until he's taken all of Europe. Uh, and I won't be satisfied until I get my glass of wine, please? You Americans, you don't care about anything. And true, I care about a nice, quiet place to eat and a nice glass of wine. And it may interest you to know that I was born right here, in France. What's going on with you today? You're demanding as hell. I think I found something to get rid of my depression. Uh -huh. Marisha, huh? Why not? It's a very pretty name with a very pretty face. Marisha, you're German? No, Polish. Ah, Polish. You know, I think you and I could go a very long way towards improving Franco-American-Polish relations. <laughs> we could talk about all the things we don't have in common. I'm not interested. Two francs, please. You know, I could, uh, I could teach you how to laugh and you could teach me how to be meaningful. You know, somehow, I don't think you two speak the same language. Oh, I think it's just a matter of accents. Taxi, taxi. Have you seen my tails? They're probably in your closet. I had a great trip to Poland. I'm glad you asked. What do you want your tails for? To have them pressed. For what? There's an invitation on the dresser been invited to the ball at the Chateau de Montereau. Oh, but I've made other plans. You never want to go to those things. Besides, I have an escort for the evening. Well, you'll just have to tell your escort to find somebody else's wife. Because we are going dancing. By the way, we're staying for the weekend, so uh, pack a bag.
the artillery build up this heavy but mobile ambassador. What about German troops? I saw three, maybe four divisions between Berlin and Poland. Now, on my way back from Danzig, we were held up at the Polish border by a troop train for almost two hours. There would be no help from Moscow either. Not since Teddy has signed the non-aggression pact with Germany. Well, it's just going to get worse. The president will be pleased with your report. If you'll excuse us, we'd better pay our respects to the Italian ambassador. A pleasure to have met you, Hillary. Markham, you saw us at the ship. Hello again. Over here on business, Mark. Business? Good God, no. Hillary tells me you've been whistle stopping all over the continent. Mm -hmm. Keeps us in champagne. Yes, I'm sure. But uh, all work and no play, as they say. Which reminds me, Jean Marc, a friend of mine, is throwing a bash later on this evening at his private club. Perhaps if you could tear yourself away from business, you oh, would care to join us. To. That'd be terrific, wouldn't it? Nick? You were just in the mood for dancing, Nicky. I'm sure you'll allow Philip and I to do so. Nick. Well, hello again. Nick, how nice to see you. Excellent, je voudrais présenter Monsieur Nick Burnham. Pleasure. Hello, Nick. Hello. Alma, oui. the American ambassador wishes us to join him. Ah, forgive us for a moment, please. Certainly. Would you like to dance? All right. Why didn't you tell me you'd be here? I didn't know. Does it bother you? Of course not. Well, I guess I do feel a little uncomfortable about the brooch. It's just a friendly gesture. Step on your foot? No, I want to get out of here. Hitler is a maniac. He'll take one step too far. That's the moment we must prepare for, with whatever tools we can lay our hands on, including subterfuge. 
armor. Oui. Unfortunately, we must ask the most of you. À votre service, Marquis. We face the reality that soon the Nazis will be in Paris. Our own government is split in its reactions. Renault's position is in favor of relying with Britain and fighting the invasion. Laval, however, wants to collaborate with the Germans. We fear Laval's wishes will be carried out. With the French government severed, someone will undoubtedly be called in to serve as a figurehead. I think perhaps it will be Marshal Pétain. Armand, you served with him at Verdun. Oh, oui. Pétain will need his own staff, a staff he can trust. He will need you. We all need you. Well, Pétain will never for one moment believe that I would not be siding with Renault. He will never believe it. You'll convince him? So you are asking me to play a traitor? Where's my good friend? You must tell no one. Not even my wife. No one. Madame de Villiers? Baron, how lovely to see you. Can I talk to you for a second? Of course. Forgive us, but Armand is still in conference with the Marquis. Ah. Baron, I haven't had a chance to tell you how much I admire you for the work you're doing with the Jews. I don't do it. We all do what we can in a tragic time. I only fear the persecution will become epidemic. If there's anything I can do to help. Hello, Leanne. Baron? Nick? Hello. As you can see, I'm about to jump on a horse. Would you care to join me? Enjoy yourself, Leanne. I'm always be busy with the market until dinner. I'll change and meet you at the stables. Great. Nick. Alfred was very sorry not to be able to ride with you, but unfortunately, this case of uh, Poland has taken prison. Uh, it's a crucial time for France. You tell the Marquis that I understand, right? Absolutely. Where's Hillary? I thought she'd be riding with us. No, um, she left last night for Cannes with a friend. There you go. That comfortable? Well, I guess so. It's been a while since I've ridden. Good.
no, no. Oh, I'm all right, really. Take it, take it, take it, please. <laughs> Sorry. We can never be together like this again. An evening with her. I do not know you dance, Jumbo. Uh, only in bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we all should take a vacation together. What do you think about a month in the Alps? Huh? It's a great idea. You know, we have a chalet up near Innsbruck. The skiing is fantastic. That's what we should all do. We should all go there. What about you, Marisha? Do you ski? Not since I was little. Anyway, I wouldn't like to be a target practice for the Nazis. I was there last year and nothing happened to me. But that was last year. Wait a couple of months. Even Champs Elysees won't be safe. Skiing is lousy on Champs Elysees. <laughs> Don't you get it, Marisha? Uh, there is not going to be a war. Germans are taking all the Jews and putting them uh, in jail. Jean Paul, the Germans started the last one and it turned out to be good for business. So no Jews, no business. So why have a war? I'm tired of people who blame this war on the Jews. We didn't start it. I'm sorry. I had no idea. If I had known, I would have stopped them. It doesn't matter. It's not your problem. Please, just leave me alone. No, I... I, I want to apologize. It, it was a cruel joke, and... You're I'm just sorry. like your friends. Marisha, please. Listen to me. My family and I left Warsaw for a better life in Germany. Then we were kicked out of Germany. The Nazis wanted us out. So they put us on a boat and shipped us off to Cuba. The Cuban didn't want us either. Another joke, right? You were on the St. Louis? <laughs> Even funnier. Nobody would take us. Definitely not your precious America. So we came here to die. Scattered all over Europe. And no one cares. I care, Marisha. I do. Do you? Feel that uh, Stalin has just raised his glass to Hitler. When did this happen? Last night, 
I'm afraid it will be a long day at the Palais. You haven't even touched your breakfast. Oh. I'm worried about you. You can't keep up this pace. My work is so important just now. What can I do? What do you do in your world of diplomacy? I don't see that you've accomplished anything. Mon cher Monsieur Robert, sometimes, if you keep people talking, they might just stop thinking about war. There is always that hope. Talking isn't going to stop this war. And your paper shuffling is a waste of time. I will try not to be too late. Au revoir. How could you? I'm sorry. Don't apologize to me. We're two different people. That's right. He's your father and you're his son. And once in a while you could give him his due. It was easier when he made all the decisions, but I'm too old for that now. I thought I could find something here. My heritage, I don't know. But I do love him. I do. I just don't think that I can live up to him. Robert, every child feels like that at some point. But we're not in the same world anymore. My world is people, and his world is, it's God and country. Countries are people, Robert. And nobody cares more about the fate of their country than your father. And it starts with caring about people and the desire to have them do something other than kill each other. You don't show me that you care about anybody but yourself. You're the second woman in 24 hours that's told me that. Neighbors. What neighbors? Mm. We haven't got any. <laughs> Were you worried they'd tell your husband? Uh, Nicky could care less, darling. He's in London playing war and steel. Now, it is my opinion and the opinion of my government that Germany will continue its blockade against England. In which case, my company, Burnham Steel Limited, will be unable to supply your needs. Now, at the same time, your own sources of steel, your plants in England and those in the Netherlands, will become increasingly vulnerable. So, I've called this emergency meeting today to propose that we begin immediately to create manufacturing facilities in Scotland and other areas of less importance to the Germans. Gentlemen, forgive me, but honoring her pledge to Poland, Britain has declared war on Germany. France has now joined with Britain. All phone lines are now open if you wish to make emergency calls. Thank you, gentlemen. Immediately. I must have that line now. Be through. No, you on the line, I'll speak to you. Darling, would you get that? Hello. Hillary, listen to me and listen hard. Britain has just declared war on Germany and France has joined in. I want you to leave Cannes now. And I'll book passage for you and Johnny back to the States. For God's sake, Snake, you're crying wolf again. I have no intention of going home. No arguments, Hill. You've got to get out of there today. Now, I'll get to Paris as soon as I can to pick him up from the McIntyres. I'll expect you to meet me there. I refuse to change my plans, sweetness and light. 
No one's going to mess with Americans, and I'm having a perfectly delightful time here. I'll be back in a week. God, I can't bear to think that all of Paris will be dark. Even the lights of Notre Dame will be out. Hmm, I know. <laughs> it's been so long, I can't even remember our last date together like this. My fault. Forgive me. I understand. Leanne, I think you must go back home to America. Without you, you mean? Yes, without me. I won't go. You must. I'm so worried for you. There are things going on here about which you know nothing. I will not have you in danger because of me. This may come as news to you, but I am your wife. <laughs> ah, yes, but I also have a mistress, you know. A very jealous mistress. I hope you're talking about France. <laughs> of course I mean France. Unfortunately, she is more in need of me than you, my darling. I can't desert her. And I can't desert you. Armand, I don't want to be a problem for you. And I swear I won't be jealous of your mistress. Please let me stay. <laughs> you are such a child sometimes. Oh. What can I do? Very well, you can stay. But you promise me one thing. The next time I ask you to leave, you must take me absolutely seriously. And you must go. Promise me now, Leanne. I promise. Where is she? What the hell are you doing? Where here? is my wife? She's upstairs. Great. How dare you? Why don't you put some clothes on? We're getting out of here. Johnny is waiting in the car. I'm not going anywhere. Since when do you order me around anyway? Look, if you are not dressed and in the car, in ten minutes I'm going to carry you out stark naked. Now move! This is my villa, Burnham. Why don't you move? Stay out of it, Markham. Listen to me, you little idiot. Don't you realize we're in the middle of a war?
Bonjour, mademoiselle. Please come in. I'm looking for Robert. I will find him for you. Follow me. You can wait here. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'm Marisha Hillman, Robert's friend. From the bistro? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm Leanne de Vier. It's a pleasure to meet you, madam. I was about to have some tea. Would you like to join me? Yes, thank you. Robert's told me so much about you. Marisha, what a surprise. It's nice to see you again. I'm sorry I came unannounced. Um, excuse me, will you? Uh, would you like to sit down? Can I get you anything to drink? Some wine, maybe? No, thanks. Robert, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't desperate. Well, you're honest, as usual. How can I help? You see, your father is a very important man in the government. My family and I, we only have papers to prove that we are Jewish. Mm -hmm. We need passports. We must get out from France before the Nazis come. Well, they're certainly taking their own sweet time getting here. Maybe they won't come. How can you be so blind? Don't you see everyone is leaving Paris? Obviously, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I like you no matter what you think about me. I'll see what my father can do. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Dad, we're going to go to America on that? It's just the tender son. The big ship's out in the harbor. I don't know why you're not coming. I'll be along on the next ship, John. I've got some business to clean up. But you said there probably won't be any more ships. Well, then I'll swim home, huh? You're not going to go to war or anything, are you? I'm not planning on it. Come on, give me a hug. I love you very much, John. I love you too, Dad. I'm just afraid I'm never going to see you again. Oh, now come on. Of course you will. Bring you that dog I promised you, huh? I'm depending on you to take care of your mother. Sure. All right, Tiger. Watch your step. Everyone's I'll see you, Hill. I can hardly wait. No, madame. A monsieur Burnham. Thank you. That'll be all. I came to say goodbye. Are you going back to the States? Oh, not right away. I've got some business in England first, but I don't think I'll be returning to Paris. How about you? No, we'll be staying on here as long as Armand thinks it's necessary. I'm not sorry about what happened. And I can't believe I'll never see you again.
You are 